device to your feet. And this time around, you're going to take at least two minutes to move around, shake someone's hands, make them feel very warm and welcome. Please help me stand to your feet. Yes, yes. Please seize this moment. Seize this moment. Seize this moment. You may not have this chance. Okay. Seize this moment. Yes, you have 60 more seconds. Please walk around. Please walk around. Even from the overflow, please walk around. Hug someone. Bid them a compliment. It's Activate 2023, day two. Yesterday was powerful. Tonight we are expect. You are not here by, uh, by a fluke. God has divinely orchestrated your way into this place. The Bible says the path of a just man is like a shiny light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Can you lift your hands and just begin to give him praise? Yes, give him praise tonight just magnify him. He has brought you from far and near. Some came from a far distance. And you are here tonight. Come on, give him praise. Shepard ourselves tonight. Let's invite God's presence into this room. Whether you like it or not, some people have come into God's presence with one issue or the other. Was the woman with the issue of blood? She has suffered for um, suffered so long in the hands of many physicians. And the Bible says that day she said to herself, If only I could touch for the hem of his garment. Tonight, I don't know about you, but I, I may not touch the man of God. If I could just be in the space where the man of God will speak, I know something will happen. Come on, I want you to one more time open your mouth and begin to receive. Yes, receive, receive, receive from the throne of grace. Someone open up your spirit and begin to receive. Let your eyes of understanding be enlightened tonight. That you will not live here the same way you have come. Come on, are you praying? It's not for everybody. These prayers are not for everybody. Some of us are coming to God's presence with some expectations in our heart. I am not here by 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 I am I am not here to waste my time. I have come here because I know that the presence of God is in this room. Are you praying someone? Go oh, connect to your heavenness. God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You see the Bible says this. The plan of the devil is to come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. This is a very auspicious moment. It's a kairos moment in some persons too. It will come in the form of distraction. You see, when it is time that a pastor or a man of God or a prophet is speaking, that is when your phone will ring. And that time there is no, no, no serious call, not even a serious matter. I, I just want to check up on you. And that's when you begin to feel pressed. We're going to pray tonight and declare, nothing distracts me. Nothing distracts me. Nothing distracts me. I am not distracted. I am here 100%. My spirit, my body, my soul, everything that we've done here from the music ministration to the prophecies, from the declarations to every word that we said here. Lord, I am not distracted. Is someone praying tonight? Yes, 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 declare. Declare tonight. No evil report, no negative news. No report will come from any palace. I give the spirit of destruction in my life tonight. Nothing takes the presence of God out of my life tonight. I am in the sanctuary and I will do just that. Is someone praying tonight? In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're going to stand as intercessors. We're going to fill this room with God's authority. Listen to me. No chair in this room. Um, that every chair in this room carries God's authority. It is not an ordinary service. We have prayed, we have fasted. Now is the time for us to declare. Maybe you may not have the opportunity to move around. Maybe you could just put your hand on that chair. And the one in front of you and the one behind you. 
and say for everyone that will come with one challenging situation for everyone that will come here with an expectation they will never leave this room the same way they came you're going to stand as an intercessor and declare understanding the authority you carry as a believer that every chair in this room is sanctified that every chair in this room is ordained divinely ordained as they sit down on that chair the anointing of God is upon it come on help me bless your hand on any chair you can find around you on any seat you can find around you we are doing something very prophetic labor shack up every seat in this room carries your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in Jesus mighty name we pray you're going to hold the hand of the next person standing the next this person standing next to you the Bible says and he said Lord help my unbelief you know some people are going to come into God's house just to see what will happen and without expectation nothing happens to you so we're going to pray tonight that the hand you're holding will be touched by divine instructions. That every word that will come from this altar will touch them. Each and every one of us will receive God's authority and blessings. So help me hold that hand very firmly. And begin to press faith. Press faith in the bush. Transfer dominion. Transfer grace tonight. Grace to remain. Grace to be steadfast. In the balanda. No one will leave you the same way they came. One of us, the power of God will move like an avalanche and it will destroy yokes in our lives. For me, this time is yours. We ask that Lord, you will move unhindered, touch each and every one of us. Go from chair to chair, go from pew to pew, go from persons to persons. And Lord, touch each and every one of us at the very point of our needs. We vow to return all the glory and all of the honor because indeed it is settled in Jesus' most powerful name we have worshipped. Let the people of God shout a living amen. Help me put those lovely hands together. Activate 2023. One more time. Give your God a loud shout. As I make welcome for our treasure. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From big, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, you're the center of it all. Jesus, you're the center of it all. Nothing else matters.
everyone excited to be in God's beautiful presence? Activate 2023, day two. If you're thirsty for the things God is ready to do, if you're hungry for the release of God's power, can I hear you shout a living name? Man! Now, if you're ready, lift your hands to heaven. And let's declare tonight's session open with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you because you arrived before we came. Thank you because your word says where two or three are gathered, you are there. We acknowledge you tonight. We recognize your presence. We have come to behold your face. And no one sees you and remain the same. We ask that tonight bodies be lifted. Yokes be broken. Miracles become commonplace. There will be an, a, a release of your power like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ. We ask, oh God, that as we look up to you. The word says they are transformed and they are changed. From one level of glory to another. We ask, oh God, that tonight that will be our testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. We refuse to permit anyone to go back the same way they came. Even when they are not expectant, there is a miracle for everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Father. Take all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' matchless name. And everyone shout a living amen. amen. Now, if you have your praise wherever you are, put your hands together and receive very warmly Potter's treasure. Now someone who knows Jesus is worthy, can I hear you make some noise tonight? No, I'm not talking about your neighbor. I said, someone who knows Jesus is worthy, can I hear you make some crazy noise right now? Now somebody, put those. The devil is a liar. Put your hands like this. Everybody. You know you came to give God praise, right? Just put your hands like this. Come on, somebody. Let's go, come on. God's no worthy. God's no worthy. And we'll give you praise. And we give you praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And we'll give you praise. Give you praise. You're always making a way. And we'll give you praise. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. How many know Jesus is worthy? Sing it again. Lord, you're worthy. Say us. 
Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. You can never again. You can never again. You can never again. No. You can never again. 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 So we can. Yes, sir. 
Hallelujah, 
to whom we will lift up our praise. Oh Lord, to thou, O Kaiba, O 
Take a minute and just praise him and worship him in your own words. Don't sing, just worship him in your own words. In your own words, just love of God tonight. Just love of God. your hands. Let the fruit of your lips give him praise tonight. The Bible declares out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has God ordained praise. Therefore give him the glory that he is deserving of. Give him the honor. Let it come from your heart. Let it come from the recesses of your spirit. Give him the worship. Give him the clap. Give him the shout. Father we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you Father. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And to Jesus, the express image of God. And to Jesus, the bread of heaven. 
and to Jesus, the light that shone in darkness and darkness could not comprehend that light. And to Jesus, our balm in Gilead. And to Jesus, our rock of ages. And to Jesus, our king of kings, lord of lords. You are the head of heroes. You are the master of the mighty. You are the captain of conquerors. You are our advocate, our judge in the courtroom. Father, with our hands lifted, we worship you. This is how we want to say that we love you. To the one who rules perfectly. To the one whose reign brings peace. Your reign is righteousness. Your reign is healing. Your reign is health. Your reign is life. Your reign is righteousness. Which Join the myriads of angels, the 20 and the 4 elders. We come boldly into the throne of grace because we are in need of mercy tonight. I'm asking Father that you will come in your power. Come in your strength. Come in your might. Do your bidding. Have your way. Throw your weight around. And let your presence, let it pervade, saturate, and fill this entire atmosphere as we vow the praise and the glory to your name. And somebody who truly loves him tonight, would you raise your hands to Jesus, put them together, give him the praise that you know that he is deserving of. I'm not talking about your neighbor. I'm not talking about your friend. Put your hands together to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am, your way maker. I can hear you clap your hands. House on the rock, give your God some praise. Would you help me turn to your neighbor to your left and to your right? Give them a warm and gentle, activated welcome. The second day of our conference tonight. Hallelujah. You may please take your seats in God's presence and with Jesus' joy. Put your hand together and receive with me the convener of Activate 2023, Reverend Lanray Olusha. I am wondering if there's anyone who truly loves Jesus unapologetically, unashamedly. Can I give you like 10 seconds in the house of God to express your love to this great God that you and I serve? This God who has no mate, who has no equal, who is in a class all by himself hear me it doesn't matter what the person standing next to you is feeling like tonight it doesn't matter if they are rolling their eyes at you i love jesus and i don't care how you feel about it can i give you another 10 seconds i may lift your hands here then your shoulders throw back your head open wide your mouth and give your god the loudest shout of praise that you can muster before you take your seats tonight Help me turn to your neighbor to your right and to your left and just love upon them. Tell them it's good to see you at Activate 2023. Look at how glorious you look in the house of God. I see you dripping glory. And then you may please be seated in God's beautiful presence. Gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the second day of this absolutely phenomenal conference God has definitely been good to us I do not know how many of you were here last night what a way to start a conference oh my God I mean I have to I kept saying to him, man go get boys Lord Jesus and if if Apostle Michael Oropa was a blessing to you like I suspect that he was Please put those hands together. Tonight, help me turn to your neighbor. Tell them, brace yourself. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. The person sitting next to you, they don't even know what's coming. They don't know what's coming. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know what's about to hit them. Tonight, you are going to hear and feel the impact of the grace of God on the lives of two of Nigeria's finest. Put together 
under one roof in the same house tonight you will hear from the one and only inimitable apostle joshua sermon tonight 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 please be seated also tonight if there is a sickness in your body we came to serve them notice for that voice that reverberates around the world is also in the city and will be in this house that voice would declares that what God cannot do does not exist I'm talking about the one and only Pastor Jerry Aze tonight tonight having these two graces together under one roof in one night that can only be grace so fasten your seat belt Pull out your ten pegs, enlarge your border, saddle your horses, get ready, get ready, get ready, because something truly is about to happen in your life. See, today is not the I'm in a hurry day. If you don't get it, forget about it. Today is not the, uh, I'm, I'm hungry, I need to go eat dinner day. Not today, not today, not today. Your destiny demands more from you today. All right. So for the fourth rounds of the service tonight, please receive all the ways from the city of Uyo, um, Pastor Love Additional, as it comes to further this service. Please put your hand together, receive him with love. What an incredible evening. And I believe you are grateful to God. Come on, will you celebrate God one more time in this house? Glory to God. Amen. In, in an incredible meeting like this, uh, full of so much grace, very many graces of God, I think your offering should be dynamic and also be an authoritative offering and being deliberate about it and let it carry some level of authority not giving like um, just as usual but let it carry some level of authority so it's an opportunity for us before we further this conference tonight let's bring an offering in the house and be very very intentional about it in this kind of atmosphere you must be very deliberate about what you do and how you do it so quickly let's put our offerings together <laughs> glory to god hallelujah amen the eagles have landed so come on quickly you need an envelope behind the pouch of your chairs. Church details are on the screen if you want to give electronically. And if you are done putting your offering together, shall we raise them as we pray? All over this room, in the overflow, everywhere, raise your seed to God. We give you, great, we give you praise, our divine master. Thank you for the opportunity to bring an offering in your presence. We ask that at this time that your hand and the expression of your blessing rest upon our givings. And Lord, we ask that in the name of Jesus Christ as we come to the end of the year, even in this conference, that we have harvest. Harvest of all our seed sown this year in one way or the other. We give you the glory and the praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' much less name we have prayed. Amen. 
glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, will you quickly, if you are sitting in the aisles, will you please rise and let's pass our offering to the man or woman standing in the aisles. And ushers, will you please receive towards the stage. Will you please rise if you are sitting on the aisle, please. If you are sitting on the aisle, please, will you please rise. And let all the offerings in your row. That is, offerings that are given physically. Please pass them to the man or woman in the aisles. Ushers, receive from the back towards the stage. Are we done? All right. For the furtherance of this incredible conference this evening, please receive with me the one and only Potter's Treasure. To the one who sits upon the throne, to the one who sits in the circle of the earth, we join the 24 elders to say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is filled with your glory. Hallelujah. How can I welcome you in? You're the host, and I am the guest. How can I tell you to move when you're already working here in this room? How could the clay say to the pot, why did you make me this way? And how can time say to eternity Get on my schedule Cause you're running late You are holy Holy You are holy Cry. Oh, 
blessing of every honor. We join in singing hallelujah.
your hands wherever you are. Lift your hands. For the hour is now. Our Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory. Can you make the Lord your focus tonight? Our King will bless you. You are worthy. You are deserving. You are the one who sits upon the circles of the earth, the inhabitants thereof are like grasshoppers. At your appearance, the mountains and the hills, they skipped like rams. Chutton saw you and fled. The sea saw you and was driven back. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels lie prostrate before him. Great God that you are. Father, now we stand in alignment with that that is your predetermined counsel. We declare, let your will be done, let your kingdom come. Glorify yourself amongst us. In Jesus' matchless name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Hmm, help me give your neighbor a loving nudge and ask them, are you ready? Amen. That neighbor does not sound like they are ready. Look for someone with fire in their eyes and ask them, are you ready? This man came at a great price. He made a huge sacrifice to be here tonight. I do not take it for granted at all. He had every reason not to be here tonight. Um, I told him that he touched a very special place in my heart. Um, <laughs> um, you must have value for sacrifice there must be something about your destiny that makes a man pay the kind of price that he's paying to be here tonight there must be something about your future that causes God to impress on a man to do that um Came from, from Abekuta to Lagos, jumped on the plane, he's here, then when he leaves here, he's still going. I, I, I don't know. Anybody who says that pastors should not have planes don't know ministry. There's, there's no way you can do that kind of itinerant. So. Anyways, he is not a visitor to this house. This man on whom undoubtedly rests the spirit of revelation and counsel to declare the counsel of God to a territory. It's amazing what God has done with him. It's become a global voice. His voice reverberates across the globe. Europe, America, Africa, Asia. Everyone has felt the impact of this great servant of God. House on the Rock, Port Harcourt, Activate Conference 2023. Please put your hand together and let us receive the ministry of the man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon tonight. Hallelujah. Good evening, Port Harcourt. Amen. I'm happy to be here and um, amen. We have to do this fast. The Spirit of God wants to bring so much within the time that we have and um, praise the name of the Lord. So I set the stage for my dear friend and brother, Pastor Jerry, to also have the opportunity to share. Could you help me on the sound? Thank you. Hallelujah. Please help me honor Pastor Lanry. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, we do the things that we do because we love Jesus. And then we love people hallelujah amen it's an honor to spend and be spent for jesus 
this is why he's granted the grace and so truly i consider it an honor to be here hallelujah and then please please do help me it was a pleasant surprise seeing him also reverend edwin all the way from house on the rock and give him a big god bless you is this how you honor reverend amen let's pray father we ask that you reveal your word to us tonight in the name of jesus let your word come with power grant us understanding that after tonight we truly will begin to walk in power and walk in authority tonight we declare that there is the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles and to jesus be all the glory amen and amen i saw so many people outside i was so humbled those in the i don't know which of the overflows that's them shouting blessings to you please be seated amen the psalmist said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord there are things you only find in the house of the lord you cannot find it in a bank you cannot find it in a school among the many things that the church does is that it is the cheapest institution for transformation all other institutions have very strict requirements like age range regional quotas but all it takes to be changed by god through the church is your availability there are no age restrictions no gender biases no pre-qualifications all that is required is your hunger and your presence hallelujah and so i want us to pay attention as i set the stage for the mighty things that god is going to be doing tonight i'm teaching on authority power and jurisdiction authority power and jurisdiction it's going to be a brief charge and then we'll pray authority power and jurisdiction please lend me your attention the average christian's understanding about power and authority is vague and largely inaccurate just listen for a minute and then we'll continue the average christian's understanding as far as the subject of authority and power is concerned is largely vague and inaccurate most believers know instinctively or perhaps by reason of being in church that the believer has been given power the believer has been given authority but in truth most believers are at a loss as to what that even means hallelujah it is true from scripture that we have been given power and that we have been given authority jesus himself made very profound statements attesting to the fact that the believer in christ has an advantage of power an advantage of authority are we together but then having that information is not enough for us to walk in the experience of power it will take going beyond just the awareness that we have been given power to actually walk in power so i to set the stage tonight my first assignment is to redefine certain terminologies because we need to be on the same page as to the idea of power and authority are you ready let's define power what exactly is power as far as the business of the kingdom is concerned here are my definitions number one power is the capacity to influence outcomes power is the capacity to influence outcomes whoever sustains the capacity to influence outcomes has power the capacity to influence outcomes number two still defining power the force that compels compliance this is my definition of power the force that compels compliance hallelujah are we together in physics 
the first law of mechanics as postulated by sir isaac newton says that everybody remains in its uniform motion or state of rest except compelled by an external force to act otherwise am i right on that that means if i keep this and i leave it here theoretically it should remain in this state if it does shift then a force greater than what is keeping it must have been exerted so power is defined as the force that compels compliance capacity to influence outcomes and the force that compels compliance is my definition of power you have that down let's define authority this will be very in authority means the right to represent number one the right to represent the right to represent number two authority is the legitimacy to use power authority is defined as the legitimacy to use power so while power talks of capacity to influence outcomes authority is the legitimacy to use power if you have power and you do not have authority you have a right the government can arrest you for instance what is the difference between an armed robber holding a gun and a military man holding a gun both of them have power but only one has authority are we learning already so authority is the right to use power before the realm of the spirit respects your use of power it must verify that you have authority there are many people who have authority but they do not have power hmm. are we learning already now authority always comes with a predefined jurisdiction please let me have your attention it is impossible to give someone the legitimacy to use power indefinitely every time you grant authority you must define jurisdictions am i correct yes there is nobody who is given power without jurisdiction the strength of authority is that it is it is you you walk the authority within a predefined jurisdiction are we learning already because most believers are only power conscious and they do not know that there is a jurisdiction to the use of the believers power we do not have power everywhere for instance the throne room there is a limit the believer does not have indefinite absolute power the power and the authority that we have has jurisdictions are we learning now let's now define jurisdiction remember we're doing i'm being very elementary we're just doing definitions so we've defined power authority now jurisdiction jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal jurisdiction please put that down represents the sphere where the use of power is allowed jurisdiction represents the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal so as much as a military man has authority his authority is defined by a code of conduct am i right on that and there are jurisdictions he cannot walk into your house for no cause and no reason and just shoot you down so there has to be jurisdiction are we together now let me go straight to the point there are a few things that we need to understand as far as the administration of power is concerned number one man does not have absolute power no man was never given absolute power only god has absolute power listen carefully the power that man has is derived and is limited that is the reason why power can increase and power can reduce god does not increase power he does not reduce power because he has absolute power you need to understand this these are the fundamentals of administering true spiritual power man 
was not given absolute power only God has absolute power and in fact is the exclusive owner of all power God does not just have absolute power based on scripture he is the exclusive owner let's look at two scriptures first Chronicles 29 11 is God helping someone already first Chronicles 29 and 11 the Bible says yours O Lord is the greatness and the power and the glory the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours yours is the kingdom O Lord and you are exalted above all scripture number two second chronicles chapter 20 from verse 5 and 6 this was a prayer that jehoshaphat was praying then jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of judah and jerusalem in the house of the lord before the new court verse 6 and he said "O lord god of our fathers are you not god in the heavens and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the earth and in your hand is there not power and might so that there is none that is able to withstand you only god god almighty has absolute power are we learning already if you're with me shout a loud amen, amen. all right are you ready for the next surprise god almighty does not have authority God cannot have authority. The nature of authority is that someone higher than you must confide upon you. Listen carefully. God does not have authority. The law of authority is that you must be under authority to have authority. The centurion said, for I am a man under authority. And then I also have other people under me. On the strength of that law, I say to one, go. And he goeth. If God has authority, there must be someone he must be obedient to. And he, there must be someone he must worship. There are certain things God cannot do. For instance, he cannot be obedient. It is not in his character. Who will he obey? Are you learning now? Because there are many believers who want the realm of the spirit to respect them and with this maze of misinformation and confusion we speak to demons and we hope that they listen we speak to situations and circumstances no the power of God is administered upon the strength of knowledge God does not have authority he only gives authority are we learning God Almighty does not have authority. Ladies and gentlemen, he only gives authority. The law of authority, I, I, I told you earlier on, is that there must be someone higher than you who gives you that authority and supervises your compliance. Every time you give authority to someone lower than you, automatically you have the power to supervise their compliance. If they default, you withdraw it. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, my goodness. Now you will worship him with understanding. The one who only has power with no authority. Isaiah 40, 14. Isaiah 40, 14. With whom did he take counsel? And who instructed him? Who taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge? And who showed him the way of understanding? There is no one. This is how great God is. That he does not have the ability to obey. And he does not have the ability to have authority. It cannot be. He searched for a man greater than him. He was willing to humble himself to such a God if there were any. And not finding any, he swore by himself. That by this two immutable counsel, it is impossible for God to lie. Do you know what that means? If God says I will bless you, there is no other force that threatens that word. Listen, let me teach you something about authority. In the court, we have customary court. 
we have high court am i right on that and they all have jurisdictions have you seen that there are certain courts that cannot pass certain uh what do we call it now talk to me lawyers they can't pass certain judgments because they say it is beyond their jurisdiction they have authority but it must be supervised the highest of them in any nation is called the supreme court am i right on that and when the supreme court makes a statement whether you agree or not as far as that jurisdiction is concerned it is over hmm. so i can say i want to bless you but if someone higher than me perhaps the one who gave me the legitimacy to use that power refuses i become helpless even though i am sincere so when God speaks, what makes his word powerful is not just that he is God, it's because he's the only one. Are we learning now? Can we pray in the spirit for one minute? We are redefining things. For someone, God is already giving you understanding. Hallelujah. Are we together now? So let's recap on everything we've said. We define power. We define authority. We define jurisdiction. And now we're establishing a few things that will guide our understanding. That man does not have absolute power. Only God has absolute power and is the exclusive owner. He was not given. He is the owner. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power. That includes the power that is used by witchcraft and all of that. <laughs> you just listen. God operates the power of God operates at three levels I don't have the time the highest dimension of his power is derived through intimacy are we together you will have to encounter God directly by his spirit to have that dimension of power the second level of God's power is hidden in principles you don't need a relationship to activate that dimension you only need knowledge so you can reject God as a person and refuse intimacy with him but understand the principles are we together now it was designed to be activated the moment the laws are adhered to regardless of relationships that is the dimension where demonic forces and they only manipulate the laws of the spirit there is already a default manifestation of power it is an abuse of power the third dimension of power happens through covenant alignment you don't have to be powerful you just need to believe and connect to the one who has power are we together are we learning now so if you ever see whether it is the power used in occultism whether it's the power used in any provided you see anything that can tame creation it is power it belongs to God even though it was abused if someone steals your money and drinks with it you are not a drunkard it's your money but it was abused but it does not stop the fact that it was your money that was stolen am i right on that yes so just because it is god's power being abused does not mean it is not his power it is his power it is only that it's being abused because one day he will withdraw it if it was not his power he would not have the right to withdraw it is it not in your Bible that Satan, hell, the grave, all will be cast into the lake of fire? Who then withdraws their power? Even the Spirit said, have you come to destroy us before our time? They are aware that there's one, the owner, the earth is the Lord's. The fullness, that means everything that finds itself in the earth belongs to him. The walls and then they, he didn't say the men that dwell there, whoever is in the earth is still God's property. And one day he will show his absolute owner. Are we learning? I assume that your quietness means you are learning. <laughs> it's amazing how believers want to walk in power but remain in ignorance. 
just learning already that God does not have authority gives it builds your faith nobody confers it upon him so when God speaks that's like the supreme court saying done every other court has to bow that is the power in his word if there were many gods and he was just the greatest there will be trouble if there were many gods equal to him and he's just the wisest out of them there will be trouble but there is none in his class are we together every once in a while we had kings upon the earth who made themselves gods we had all kinds of demons who deceive people that they were god and usually it is god's system that all through history a time will come where he will shout from heaven and remind people for instance nebuchadnezzar when he turns him to become an animal still with the brain of a man it is to make a statement that there is a god that rules over the affairs of men i'm saying that because everything god has said to you that you are wondering will it come to pass that means you are saying there is a power higher than him that may stop it no the moment you believe that God's word does not come to pass, I personally consider it sin against God. You are saying he lied that he does not possess authority. Let God be true and all men liars. Now, to walk in dominion, you must have both power and authority. Now, you understand what I'm saying? That to walk in dominion, the force to create that compliance whether economic power in this case spiritual power you must do you know that the money in your pocket is nigeria's property hello you've forgotten let me remind you that the money in your pocket and the one in your bank provided you are holding paper it is written there it does not belong to you you are using it but it is nigeria's property amazing how this thing works the land that you are building on you bought it but in truth based on an agreement you are not even aware of because you were too happy to read and you just signed it it says after 99 years they hope that you'll be dead by then the devil is a liar you will live long say amen, amen. shout a louder amen, amen. Yeah. <laughs> so to walk in dominion you must need power and authority. Luke 10, 19. You will understand that statement now. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. My spiritual life changed when I understood the things that I'm sharing with you. And believe me, when it comes to this subject of power, I know something a bit about it. May not know everything, but there are a few things we know. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Behold, I give you... Now, even New King James does not get it right. The only version that really gets what Jesus said is amplified. Give us amplified. King James says power. New King James says authority. I respect them, but both of them are wrong. This is what Jesus said. Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. Do you notice that the moment he mentioned authority, jurisdiction came? He defined what you are to have authority over. This is a law that was respected right from Genesis 1.28. The moment God gives men authority, let them have dominion. He did not stop there. Over. And he defined everything you should have dominion over. Behold, I give you authority. And I give you power. Are we together? And he says on account of that, nothing when you understand that you have authority and you have power nothing shall by any means hurt you this is profound so we know from scripture that man has been given power and with power he's been given authority do you know why authority is important because there is a god god in heaven higher than you who supervises your administration of that power and supervises the obedience of creation while you administer that power so if i tell one go and it does not go it is not my responsibility to defend that statement the power was received the authority was conferred 
the owner of the power and the one who gave me the authority will have to defend his name as touching that disobedience when you understand this your ego gets out of the way because it is god's business to bring confirmation are we learning now otherwise how will you ever stand before a dead body and ask it to come back to life have you ever stood before a dead body that did not move honestly that's when you will know that god was wise to say get out of the way and allow me the, to be the one who confirms the word there are cases that when you see humanly speaking health issues economic situations using the lens of a man you would not even want to dare those things because you will be embarrassing yourself and creating a negative memorial forever people will remember you and say no this person you are as powerless as whatever but what gives you the audacity is that i have power i have authority and there is one who stands behind me as a mighty terrible one authority hallelujah what were we given authority over let me talk a bit about jurisdiction and then we'll pray genesis 1 28 you need to study the jurisdiction for the administration of your power the power god has given you and god blessed them and said be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it it says have dominion over number one the fish of the sea it doesn't mean fish no it's, it's a way of showing realms so it uses whatever creature that represents that realm when it says the fish of the sea it does not mean fish are we together it means that domain then he talks of the birds of the air the air he talks of every living thing that moves upon the earth we are given that jurisdiction satan is called the prince of the power of the air he's not talking about this air it's a spiritual location are we together now this is very important number two matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 what is the believer given power over authority over let's examine from scripture and when he had called the 12 disciples to him he gave them power over help me on clean spirits you don't have power over every spirit no you don't have power over verify the spirit is unclean first so that you stop commanding things anyhow and then you are embarrassed you are not given power over the spirits of men it's called manipulation because the spirits of men especially men in christ are also holy spirits it's just that the holy spirit is the most holy spirit <laughs> are you learning now we are defining jurisdiction you see that sincere believers make mistakes and sometimes we command the holy spirit we command all, and sometimes god just moves because he knows our ignorance versus our sincerity of heart but it doesn't mean that what we are doing and saying is right no you are given power over before you act you want that spirit to obey you verify it is unclean what it what makes it unclean it's rebellion against the laws of god are we together yeah do you know why you cannot call a human spirit unclean even if the man is not saved because he has an opportunity to be saved demons don't so it's been verified that they are unclean spirits there is no possibility of salvation for them but for a man who may be Saul today he can be Paul tomorrow so even in that state the blood still advocates even until he steps into the experience of salvation I wish I had time this is I promise you a charge. I promise you a charge. I'm, I'm, I'm creating the stage for Pastor Jerry to come and then bless you. I think if I do this, I've, I've done well tonight. I would have helped someone with his understanding. Are we together? Oh, let God arise and let my enemies be scattered. No, he never said your enemies. He said his enemies. Hold on. Do you know what it means to be God's enemy? Let me define God's enemy for you. Whoever perpetually becomes a hindrance to the manifestation of his will, including you, becomes his enemy. Whoever becomes a perpetual hindrance 
to the manifestation of his will so before you pray that prayer you have to examine yourself that you are not praying against yourself when the captain of the of the lord's army came to joshua is it not in your bible he said are you for us or against us and he said neither i don't work like that whoever is accomplishing the will of god for that moment even if he's cyrus becomes my ally as far as god is concerned you will be learning i'm going ahead of myself because that's where we're going to stop <laughs> goodness we have power over creation we have power over unclean spirits are we still together number three we have power to change negative circumstances matthew 8 27 we have power to change negative circumstances negative conditions as we see in the life of jesus the Bible says this was the, the wind. And remember the, 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 the storm, the boisterous storm at sea? The Bible says, so when the, then the men marveled saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? King James says, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? So we have power not just over animate things as we know we also have the power to manipulate with respect to the will of god even in animate things and conditions that is the reason why i can speak to a negative condition around your life it is not a life but it can still hear because it was created the elements that form that problem were elements that god created for instance men for instance spirits are we together if a man decides to promote you the lack of promotion is a problem but it was caused by someone god created are we together now and if it becomes a hindrance to his will i'm able to declare by the spirit of god that that circumstance will change listen if you understand this your spiritual life will be so powerful because you will know how to partner with the holy spirit You'll be learning shortly that the Holy Spirit does not partner carelessly. He verifies the will of God as the basis of his partnership. If the will of God is not found in that program, the Holy Spirit will not be part of it. Wow. Could it be why many prayers are not answered? Is it not in your Bible? And this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will, not our desires, according to his will, what is God's will? Whatever he says. God's will is whatever he says because where the power of God is, is where his voice and his word has gone to. Genesis 21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said not as she wanted and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken if he has said it and he has spoken that becomes the assignment of power I'm going ahead of myself but we need to understand the purpose of power any kind of power the assignment of power is to bring all things to the will of God that's it so before the power of God acts it has to first verify, especially if it is corrective. Is that current condition the will of God? If not, it begins to change that person or change that situation until it becomes the will of God. Then it stops working. You also know at what point the power of God stops working when the will of God is established. That means if the will of God is not yet established in your life, I assure you the power of God is still working. Are we learning now? very profound fundamental spiritual truths this is how jesus taught the disciples to have power he did not just give them power do you know the disaster they would have become if the only thing that was from fishermen to impartation to commissioning the gospel would not cross one city he took out time this was what he was teaching them when they were now full of light then power came are we together that is the reason why when the apostle saw the damsel, remember? The damsel that had the spirit of divination. He didn't act carelessly. He had to verify whether it was the will of God or not. It took time. 
he needed to discern because he knew that the power of God does not act outside or against the will of God. And when he discovered that even though her prophecy was right, the spirit behind it was not of God. He had the legitimate ground because we were given power over unclean spirits. Is someone learning? Unclean spirits. So if I sit down and I call for pastor's money, whether he likes it or not, to come to me, you see that there is a problem there. It is not the money. It is the fact that stealing does not allow... I, are we together? Rather than saying pastor's money will come to me, here is what happens. You call on the mystery of favor. Favor works with his will. That is an engracing of the spirit. God will make him like me. Are we together now? And he will release it freely. Because in the kingdom, even at the expense of your eternal destiny, God does not force you to receive him. There are people going to hell today in spite of the fact that they will be condemned forever. God still respects their will. They reject him and he says, I respect you. Go to hell. I respect you. I mean, go to hellfire, not, not go to hell as an insult. Are we together? <laughs> as on the rock. <laughs> what is the assignment of power and authority? Matthew 6 and verse 10. I'm praying that someone got what I said tonight. Matthew 6 and verse 10. Let's read it together. Ready? One to read. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This is why God gave us power. Every time you pray and fast and roll on the ground for power, make sure you understand this scripture and confess it too. Otherwise, your fasting will be a waste. Otherwise, your praying will be a waste. God does not respond to emotions and sentiments. He responds to your understanding and the purity of your desire to achieve this goal. So why do I come asking that God will impart more grace? Because I want to be equipped with the power and the authority that helps me to enforce his will on the earth. What is his will? I told you what he has said. What he has said. There are many things God has said. Let me give you an example. That you shall be the head and not the tail. That is a statement that the power of God has been searching for who believes and who will come into partnership with that power to make happen. If I come to you as a man of God and say in the name of Jesus, I declare you are the head. I am in the will of flow freely, unhindered to bring that word to pass. Are we together? If I pray for your loved ones to be saved and I say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit of God that these ones will go everywhere in the name of Jesus Christ. Immediately, watch this, immediately the power of God because it is God's will that all men be saved. Every time you see abuse of power is because understanding of its purpose was not established. If God gives me prophetic power, the ability to see now, if God reveals pastor's account number, for instance, just as an example, and then my lost can partner with that power, and I can now prophesy the account and say, on account of that, withdraw X, Y, Z, and send to me. I have abused power. Why was it an abuse? Because the will of God was not established in that program. That means you can be anointed, and yet your love life is not in place. There is a reason why even faith works by love. So even though we have the power to compromise, but we constrain ourselves as proof that we love God and we administer power only within the jurisdiction of God's will. Listen, if you know this as a man of God, you will be excellent in your administering power. You will see that God continues to back you up because your life and your ministry become so dexterous. God knows that every time you show up, it is to bless people. Every time you show up, it is that his will will be done. Are we together now? 
So if the sick are healed, it's more than just a verification that a man is anointed. It is that his will has come to pass. If God gives you revelatory power as a man of God, and you now use it to open people up, enlighten them, bring them to an understanding like I'm bringing to you now. Are you seeing that now? Once your heart is committed, listen, it is one of the greatest secrets I learned in my walk of power with God. The moment your heart becomes pegged at making the will of God to be manifest through your life, you have truly entered the realm of genuine power, economic power, power manifesting as influence, power for signs and wonders. Are we learning now? So many, many believers desire power without authority. God, just give me power. I don't know you. I don't care about you. I hear that you can give men things that make, and God says, no. The possibilities of the flesh in your life are too many to give you power unsupervised. That is why he, he, he connected the power to your yieldedness. Look up. Look at me, please. Are we learning? Spiritual power is tied to the yieldedness of the individual. The degree to which you are yielded is what is responsible for the increase of power. Because that means that you are ready to subscribe to authority and to work within jurisdiction. So when two people come and stand here and manifest different possibilities, it is not because it's a different God. Are we together? It is a reflection. Our differences, even in administering spiritual power, is a product of our yieldedness yieldedness someone can pray for someone on a wheelchair and nothing happens and another person may not even pray and then he rises up from the wheelchair the difference is that degree of power that degree of presence which is a measure of the degree of yieldedness who is learning tonight hallelujah are you saying that it is safe for many Christians to not have power? That God's refusing to give certain people power is an act of his mercy for your sake. Because the possibilities that are locked up within them, they will be a disaster to his program and even to your health if they have access to power without an understanding of authority. Today, America... And Europe with all due respect are battling a violation of this principle giving people access to power whether as guns are we together whether as the right to execute their will without authority it will always produce disaster economically politically when you give people power and then do not give them authority I know someone who bought a car for Uber, Bolt, no Bolt, Uber, and then gave this guy to, to help him. After many months, the person did not bring any money. He would give a flimsy excuse, the tire spoiled, this one spoiled, and the man decided to buy something, I can't remember the name, you put a tracker. That's authority now. It will force that driver to behave. So the driver must be yielding returns, not because he's a good man, but now he has been forced by a system called a tracker. Are we together? Can I tell you? You know how powerful you are in this kingdom to the degree to which you are constrained by authority. You see, independence in our world is proof of maturity. The degree to which you do not need anybody. However, reverse is the case in the spirit. That the ones who are powerful and mighty are the ones who are constrained by authority. So the centurion said, I am a man under authority. And on account of that, I have soldiers under me. Are we together? I say to one, go, and he goeth. To another, come, and he cometh. And he said, Jesus, speak the word only. You need not come to my house because I know you are a man under authority. I know the law of authority. Because you, are, you became a man. Jesus only manifested authority when he became a man. I told you, God does not have authority authority but when God became a man he had to submit to the authority system too that was why as a reward for his submission God highly exalted him 
are we together now and gave him a name that is above every other name and gave him and gave him and gave him and gave him because he submitted and gave him hallelujah is someone learning so when you stand before spirits and you say in Jesus name I don't want to see you go while you are shouting they are just watching you do you know why they don't go I will tell you it's not just because you are more or less anointed no no I wish we had time I would have shown you how to use the authority I may not be able to cover that in this discussion maybe another time at least you know the jurisdiction now don't pray against the spirit of a man no you can ask God it is God who is called the father of spirits you know what that means he's the originator is the Greek word pata the Hebrew is Abba the originator of all spirits that means it is within his power and with respect to him it is not illegal to manipulate any human spirit even if he's Pharaoh he will make Pharaoh to give his slaves gold the father of spirits for you now it is this understanding that constructs your prayer life because one of the ways we execute power in the kingdom is in prayer are we learning now one of the ways we execute power in the kingdom is in prayer help me appreciate pastor jerry Prayer is a platform that gives you the allowance to manifest spiritual power. Is someone learning? This is very, very powerful. So you don't in prayer, it is this understanding that constructs your prayer life because there is something called praying amiss. What makes prayer powerful is the word compliancy of that prayer. What makes prayer, listen carefully, powerful is the word compliancy the degree to which that prayer aligns with the word of God because I told you God's power only follows what he says are we learning yeah so when you see prayer producing result it is because the word of God has been connected to that prayer and it will commit God's power to bring to pass but it's important to understand so we've been given power over elemental forces the sea the air the earth are we together now this is very powerful there are certain oh dear, there are certain dimensions of power that was given to all men not believers for instance a farmer does not need to be a Christian to draw the power of God that is deposited in the earth I told you that there are three levels of God's power. The highest dimension of God's power is attracted through intimacy. You must encounter him to have that dimension of power. The second dimension of power is hidden in principles. It is not relational. It, it is a function of light. Are we together? If you know it, whether as a businessman, whether as a politician, you can build a great nation even though a godless nation like Babylon God respected the building of Babylon they used his very power to build something that was against his will and yet the nation of Israel as anointed as they were they could not build anything till David arrived you read the story they had encounters but they did not understand the power enshrined in principles and it was David that gave stability and establishment to God's people power over unclean spirits verify that a spirit is unclean before you rebuke it there are many many spirits that are clean a human spirit saved or unsaved cannot be called an unclean spirit because Jesus died for everyone and there is hope for he that is joined to the living that means a man who is Saul today can become Paul tomorrow so you still cannot rebuke the man even though he's unsaved you can only pray for his salvation Unclean spirits are spirits that have been verified by God's verdict 
that there is no salvation for them it is for such that when you administer the power of God in the name in the name of Jesus they leave I give you power over unclean spirits are we following find somewhere to wrap up now then you have power like I said over situations and circumstances and now it is I told you that everything that has to do with the administration of power please do not forget this is with respect to the will of God because if someone is saying rain stop and another person is saying Lord send rain I need to eat you see that there are two people who are in conflict so I am praying right now and say, Father, please bring rain in Port Harcourt. This year I must eat. My children will not die of hunger. If another person is saying, Lord, let rain stay because I'm anointed. As sincere as those things are, the one that will be answered is not the one who prays more. It is the one who partners with the will of God for that moment. Everything in the kingdom revolves within the sphere of the will of God. If you remove the will of God out, his power has no ministry. The assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into his will. Are we together? The moment you are outside of the will of God, the power of God has no ministry. It is the reason why the power follows the word. Because the word of God is the clearest revelation of his will. So before I pray for the sick, there must be an understanding. I don't need to recite it to his hearing. It's a consciousness. What is the basis of that person getting healed? Is it consistent with the will of God? That is how I know, not by feelings. I don't have to feel anointed. This is an issue of integrity here. So I know that it is God's desire for that man to be healed. And now I can pray for that person, believing that the power of God will follow his will. Can I tell you, many believers have their lives in shambles because they do not respect the will of God. So they cannot see the power of God. They are fasting against the will of God. They are praying against the will of God. It's him. Jesus said, Father, let me show you Jesus. The greatest manifesto of the power of God, if it be thy will. Or he said, take this cup off me. He says, nevertheless. Ah, because if I find myself in disalignment to your will, I can no longer be called the word of God. I hope he knew he was tempted in every way. So he could have lost that status as the word of God. He was not just called the word of God because he was a word incarnate. It was because he ensured that his life was always in sync with the will of God. Now he had a chance to be thinking differently from what God wanted to do. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Nevertheless. In fact, here's what he said. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish it. Can I tell you, the greatest people who will manifest the power of God in this end time are those who will pay the price to know the will of God. Looking for power is useless until you understand the will of God. Because the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into the will of God. Then to execute the will of God to make it happen. Hallelujah. Is it God's will for me to prosper? I check from scripture if that is true then I know for a fact that there must be a dimension of his power allocated for bringing that will to pass it is now my assignment to find out I'm not in doubt it is no longer will God bless me it is finding out how every time listen oh dear do we have time I have to give Pastor Jerry room to come and preach but let me teach you something The moment the will of God is about to come to pass in your life, watch this. The power of God will also depend on the wisdom of God. If the wisdom of God is not revealed, the power of God cannot work accurately. Watch this. Please listen to me. It is the wisdom of God that guides the operation of the power of God to make it manifest profitably. The Bible says to the Greeks, Christ is revealed. Christ, the anointing, is revealed as the wisdom of God and the power of God. So when God wants to help a man to truly walk in power, 
even if you pray for power alone is two things that will arrive in your life power and wisdom wisdom is what gives value to the correct use of power are we together now because the dynamics of operating power is that until you have wisdom you cannot let me show you then we'll pray Ephesians chapter 2 please give us from verse 16 Paul is praying let's see the content of his prayer Ephesians chapter 1 in fact verse 16 1 chapter 1 please Ephesians 1 and verse 16 can you give it to us thank you he says I cease not he's praying now to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers what is the content of the prayer 17 help us media that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ watch this the father of glory may give unto you what is the first thing that whole journey will end in power but he said he will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse please the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling number one number two what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints shout verse three together please ready one to read and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power the bible says according as his divine power have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness but the administration is through the knowledge hallelujah wisdom the wisdom of god is very powerful many people have prayed for power but they have not prayed for wisdom so they have the power but then they are not able to manifest power and authority because there is no wisdom do you know that even if elijah elisha prayed over the woman remember the woman in, in uh second kings now hallelujah the wife of the sons of the prophet do you know that even though he prayed for her if he had spoken prophetically over her and there was no wisdom she still would have remained in debt it was the prophetic word that made her to even go and find vessels to borrow in the first place if he did not prophesy nobody would give her any vessel it was not a product of her creativity and then she comes and he gives her a strategy that is wisdom now i've released power up for multiplication but the power depends on vessels capacity you see this is the reason why those who are not enlightened if you impart power over them they will look like they are fake because the use of the power is not with wisdom have you seen somebody with all due respect manifest power and somehow you, you are you are there is no wisdom gives beauty to the use of power are we together now yes it is the mistake if you study the history of the church in nigeria this was the mistake many fathers with all due respect to them some dead and have gone to be with the lord they prayed and they accessed power but many of them did not access wisdom through the word so they in administering power they brought many things that were prophetic experiences and made doctrine out of them because wisdom was not there to separate personalized dealings and things that were doctrines are we learning now so when you have the power of god and you have the wisdom of god you will manifest dominion and authority intelligently in a way and a manner that brings glory to the name of the lord let me do a recap and then we'll pray number one we define power as the capacity to influence outcomes we define power as the force that compels compliance number two we define authority as the right to represent the legitimacy to use power that if you do not have authority the use of your power is illegal as seen in the case of a military man and an armed robber an armed robber has power but he lacks authority why because there is no the institution that authorized him is not there cannot be identified and the jurisdiction for the use of his rifle is also not there i told you that authority is always jurisdictional and that jurisdiction is defined as a sphere the sphere where the use of power is allowed 
beyond which it becomes illegal i need to recap one last time on very strong points that i made for your understanding number one that man does not have absolute power no he cannot have absolute power because his power is derived are we together only god has absolute power and in fact i did say that he is the owner of all power that's what makes him omnipotent it's an attribute of god that he did not share with man i forgot to tell you that it's not everything in god's nature that he gave man we are partakers of his divine nature but not every aspect of his nature there are dimensions of his nature he withdrew from man that's what makes him god his omnipresence his omniscience and his omnipotence these are the three attributes of god that brands him in a class all by himself man did not receive that one are we together this is very important then remember many of you were surprised when i made the statement that god does not have authority god cannot have authority the nature of authority i remind you is that an authority a person higher than you must confide upon you no god only manifested authority in jesus and that is because he became a man so we see him submit to john submit to simeon the prophet anna the prophetess are we together now because he was a pattern man a model for the believer as to how he will be walking with in authority he even said my father is greater than i yet we understand the triune nature but god cannot have authority if god has authority he must be loyal to someone i also told you that god cannot obey it's not an ability that he has who will he obey no obedience is not a quality that god possesses he cannot obey no to obey means someone outside yourself must give you the instruction and there is no man who can instruct him god does not obey and this is i wish i had time i would have taught you i think it's a mistake that people have made in the body of christ they command god and sometimes we say statements like we need to give god permission in the earth and i understand what sometimes preachers are trying to say but it's not exactly true no man gives god permission uh, what he does is partnership it's not permission if god does not seek your will and still does something he's still right because the earth is still is still his own are we together now yes he limited himself to allow man taste of the power of revealing his glory but when he walks with man it is not weakness it is allowing man to share in he, that glory are we together so he said if all men refuse to praise me i can ignore them and raise up stones and it is not illegal so if i want to pray for the sick now and god wants the sick to come and i don't pray and it looks like the sick are not healed it's not that god is limited is that he has bound himself to give man an opportunity to experience his glory also but it is within his exclusive ability to do anything with or without the permission of man because he has power without authority the person who has power without authority also does not have jurisdiction for the use of that power because god is not defined by any jurisdiction to the point that paul talks about the possibility of tasting of the power of the ages to come who owns that one are we together god is not restricted by time by dimensions he can go into your yesterday your tomorrow and he can bless you and speak over your life i told you that one of the reasons why we believe god is not just that he has integrity is because he's the only one who can speak like that there is no other person higher than him to contend with him so if you disbelieve god it is proof that you suspect he's a liar that somewhere there is someone higher than him and he's not telling you the truth hallelujah we're going to pray many believers do not understand the jurisdiction of their power so we pray and we say all kinds of things and they never get answered there is intelligence to the use of power I didn't have the time to teach you on how the believer executes power because there is a 
we are given a code of conduct are we together there are rules of engagement for instance when you see a herbalist there is a way he's trained to use power he can look at you and say bring chicken bring this bring that now the believer does not act like that there is a way we release the power of God and one of the platforms I told you earlier on is in prayer Mark eleven twenty four. what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them number two is by the use of the name we can spend all night talking about that the use of the name of Jesus is not the recitation of the name the power is not in the recitation the recitation only makes creation know that he is the one we are talking about the use of the name of Jesus is first a consciousness of his exalted position Jesus never had to use his name to say in my name he only said in my name when he was talking to the disciples so you can say in Jesus name and you did not use the name of Jesus it is not the recitation no otherwise the name will be a journey some charm somewhere it is a consciousness a consciousness the name is a capture of the office that has been given to him now are we together when you say Jesus his name was not even Jesus I hope you know that yes so when you say Jesus demons do not I mean the J-E-S-U-S you are talking about it did not exist many years ago in that form if you go to Israel and say Jesus they will correct you because the number one they will say your pronunciation is wrong and now begin to argue about the person you are talking about there are footballers that carry this name you call their name and see whether demons will go so it's not I'm not saying don't use Jesus I hope you get what I'm saying when we say Jesus we are letting creation know that the force behind the results is the one exalted as Lord and Christ but the name Jesus is not a person's name the owner of that name today has an office it is that office that the power comes from because demons can call Jesus too but they do not understand the power of the office the Bible says and every knee will bow of things in earth under the earth and confess that Jesus has now become Lord that is the name the name is his lordship is an office of dominion the earth is the why do you call me Lord Lord the moment you come to a revelation of his lordship you have found the key to the name it's not the pronunciation of his earth work the name Jesus was a name that was given to him he would have been anybody Joshua you would have been Ebenezer you would have been anything at all are we together so when demons see you and you say in Jesus name they look behind the speakings because the damsel said these are men who came to she was saying everything right but it was by a familiar spirit so when we say in Jesus name we are saying that name so that for us and those who hear us we know that the, the one whose office we are invoking is the one they know as Jesus but it is a consciousness and when demons know you carry that consciousness of being exalted number one your oneness with Christ number two your positional advantage not just that he's great but that you are exalted with him now then your shadows can heal the shadows do not call the name of Jesus but the authority that is behind that name we have to stop rise up on your feet can we pray for a minute or two go ahead lift your voice and pray the believer given authority in Christ capacity to exact dominion upon creation go ahead and pray declare it upon your life I have authority I have power I understand the jurisdiction of my authority I understand the use of the power that the assignment of power is to birth the will and the purposes of God someone is praying are you praying for the next one minute
What manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? What manner of man is this? I have power and I have authority. The legitimacy to use that power over creation against unclean spirits over situations and circumstances hallelujah one more prayer point and then i just speak over you and we are done remember now you have power and you have authority there is no fear to the one who has authority because the institution that conferred it upon you defends you and if need be they validate that you are not using it illegitimately are we together now yes it is God that gave you power and he gave you authority and jurisdiction. So when you speak over your life and creation and they refuse to obey, it is not your business again. The one who conferred the authority upon you for his name's sake, they hurt his integrity when they disobey you and he is forced to now use his absolute power without authority and force creation to hear you. Are you ready to speak over your destiny now? Now you know that you can speak and pray without fear. Why? Because you have power and you have authority. And remember, the modus operandi is that all your speakings must be consistent with the will of God. What is the will of God? His thoughts revealed in what he said. Genesis 21, 1. The Lord visited Sarah as he has said. He did unto Sarah as he has spoken. So everything you know that God has said concerning you, I call them exceeding great and precious promises. The Bible says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. In one minute, walking on borrowed time, go ahead and declare over your destiny. Do not be silent. Inside, outside, online, go ahead and begin to pray. Declare, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my life. In the name of Jesus, the head and not the tail, exalted above the nations of the earth. Someone is making declarations. Remember you have authority. Remember you have power. Remember you are praying within the jurisdiction of your authority. You are praying consistent with the will of God. There is a government above you that insists that creation circumstances your destiny becomes obedient take a minute to pray the favor of god working in my life doors are opening by the spirit no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me falls in judgment in the name of jesus i go forward i work strong by the spirit of the living god his wisdom is at work in my life his power is at work in my life is someone declaring in one minute the year ends in victory for me thanks be to god which causes me to triumph always and this is the victory that overcome the world even my faith in the name of jesus christ creation aligns itself to work out the purposes of God in my life. Man, walk in partnership with the spirit of grace. Walking out the purposes of God in my life. In the name of Jesus, everything I touch is blessed. Blessed by the spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Pastor Jerry, let me borrow one minute from your time. And just make an altar call. Um, I believe that until men encounter Jesus in truth, there is no possibility for walking in true power. It is impossible that in a crowd of thousands of people here, inside, outside, following online, there will always, because the Bible says, the Lord added daily, not just as many as should be transformed, they first have to be saved. Because his desire is first that all men be saved. Then that they come into the knowledge of the truth. 
I believe that there's someone here you came to church tonight you are inside here you're outside and you're saying apostle on hearing you speak I am that one person who has only used his power invested in principles without a relationship with the son of the living God he came to Nicodemus and he said in John 3 and verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting. 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Here is your chance tonight. Remember, at the detriment of your eternal salvation, your eternal, your eternity, God allows you to choose two groups in one. The first is someone who is saying, I have never truly consciously made Jesus Lord of my life number two the second is saying apostle I love Jesus and but here and there my life has gone haywire and I need to rededicate my life I'm only looking for one sincere person who will not lie to himself or herself I don't need everybody one sincere person I begin to count one to five all of the overflows you may do well to just move to your screens and those who are in here may I request with gallancy and honor make your way to the front i begin to count one let's celebrate them as they come two thank you thank you for your courage win that war tonight once and for all come to jesus the bible declares as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away come three if you're coming i want you to run come there's no shame there's no fear you are coming to your savior the custodian and the owner of all power the power that can change your life he is able to by his power save even to the uttermost for the last count and i begin to pray hallelujah amen I will just pray and then I'll take my seat. When Pastor Jerry comes and takes his session, he will make prophetic declarations, I believe, over your destiny. And you receive with all your heart and let that open you up to new chapters. Because one of the ways that we receive the power of God is through prophetic declarations. There are times that you are spoken upon. Hallelujah. For all of you who are in front here, thank you very much for making this bold and noble decision. Those who are following either by television or watching online, thank you for joining. Here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Lift your right hand if you heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I'm a child of God, the righteousness of God in Christ. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. And I stand tonight under the corporate anointing here to make declarations that your sins are truly forgiven by the integrity of scripture. In the name of Jesus, I call you the righteousness of God in Christ and I commend you to the word of his grace and to the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you'll be built, you'll be established in righteousness. You will love Jesus all the days of your life and you will live for him forever. In Jesus' name. Any instructions on what to do with them? Okay, beautiful. So here's what I want you to do, all of you. Um, there's a gentleman and a lady I see waving their hands. May I please request that you move to my right. That will be your left. And they'll have a word with you very quickly. And then you return to join the next session. Let's give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor Larry, thank you so very much. House on the Rock, thank you so much. I love you. May God bless you. Jesus name. I know you can do better than that. Please put your hand together. 
I don't know how Apostle does it, but thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. One more time. Could you put your, put your hand together and celebrate the man of God? Oh, you can do better than that. <laughs> put your, if you were seeing what was going on in the front now, you will understand. Please put your hand together. Hallelujah. I already told you today is not the day for going home early. Today is not that day. Today is not I'm hungry. Today, today is not that day. Why don't you lift your hands wherever you are? And focus on the Lord and just take a brief moment and just worship him. Our Father, we adore you. We'll bless you, our King. We'll give you glory. We give you honor. We give you honor. We give you honor. Everyone worshiping wherever you are this morning, this evening. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Father, we are ready. Father, we are open. Do with us that that you alone can do. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' matchless name, and everybody says amen. amen. No, I thought your amen was going to be louder than that. Can you do me a favor? Grab the hand of somebody that is standing beside you and just shake them and just shake them and tell them that I hope you are ready. Tell them I hope you are ready. I hope you are ready because what is about to hit you tonight, what is about to hit you tonight is not common. What is about to hit you tonight is shaking the world. When a man is able to call millions of people to prayer every day, his voice reverberate across the globe as that voice that shouts and noises it aboard that what God cannot do simply does not exist. He has made the statement a mantra. Elroy, the God who sees me, house on the rock, Port Harcourt, Port Harcourt City. Please make welcome the lion that roars out of Nigeria. The one and only Pastor Jerry Aze. I know you're celebrating Jesus. Would you go ahead and celebrate the God of our flesh? In whom the smoke of Ramon is not the shadow of turning. Celebrate the Lord. I told you something is going on in your house right now what if I told you there is healing going on there is deliverance going on somebody shout shout like you know the Lord is already doing it shout like you already know that doors are already opening shout like you already know that the foundations of the wicked are being shaken Somebody celebrate, 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 celebrate. What you give the Lord a loud show. You know, apparently, I'm, I'm, I mean, all the time I, I was thinking of coming here. Um, there's been a scripture that's on my mind. I so that I don't forget. And it is Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1. So media, if you would just help me, show me Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. It says, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. Which means, if you are in a season of latter rain and it is not raining, you must ask for the rain. And by the way, I do not, this is not my message, but this scripture has been so strong in my heart. There are people who are looking at me right now. You are already in your latter rain season. I need you to understand that latter rain season is the rain that causes you to carry your harvest. 
and so if you are here and you're saying pastor jerry from january up until now i've put a seed on the ground there's a seed of prayer there's a seed of my tears there's a seed i have put on the ground but all i am asking is uh, i can today uh, be the day that it will rain my latter rain because hear me as i hear the lord the harvest of 2023 will not be postponed the harvest of 2023 will not be ripped in 2024 i want you to raise your right hand and turn the say right now i didn't hear your thunder now say now whatsoever that is supposed to happen in my life that has not yet happened what are you waiting for say right now up here up here up here up here up here up here open your mouth Raketubasha, la de akona, isanda koto, ashabada, la koto la she, raketola sha. Somebody pray, somebody pray, la keta me, ashande, la kote, zabada, la kata me, rabe atoka sha, asamene, la koto ya, yes sir, la kote ya, ime shabada, akoto la. Let your amen turn the louder. Let your amen rise higher. Father, today we decree according to your word. You say, ask, ask, ask. I call it I of the Lord reign in the time of the latter rain. Abba Kunde say, Abba, there are your people who are here in their latter rain season, but there is no rain anywhere. At the sound of their amen, it will not be up to seven days. Beginning from right now, let them carry their evidence. Whatever that is due to happen in your life that has not yet happened by the power and the authority that we have in Jesus, we decree and declare, let them carry their evidence right now. Let them carry the answer right now. Let them carry the answer right now. Let them carry it right now. Their healing will not be postponed to 2024. Their breakthrough will not happen in 2024. Their answer will not happen in 2024. Let it appear right now. 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 Let it appear. Let it appear. Somebody turn the louder. Amen. Father, we bless you tonight. We ask, let there be none of any man but all of you. We give you all the glory. Let a lover of the Lord thunder a louder. Amen. Amen. Would you help me celebrate the Lord? Celebrate the Lord like you really love him. Hallelujah. Please help me take your seat for one second. For one, just one second, you know. I, I mean it when I, I say one second. And it's my joy to be here tonight. And it's such a great privilege and a humbling one to know that God will count us worthy. Um, the Bible says no man taketh this honor to himself except he be called. And I want to especially appreciate the great servant of God, Pastor Larry Olushe. Please help me celebrate one of the very few good men that I know. Celebrate, 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 celebrate Pastor Larry for everything he's done. 
for a great work he's done and he's doing in the body of Christ. We honor and we appreciate you deeply. We honor Pastor Larry, the pastors, the leaders of House on the Rock, Portacot. I also want to celebrate um, the great man of God, Pastor Edwin, and um, also Pastor Christy Vaturi. Please help me celebrate this great man of God. And of course, every other great man men of God who are in the house and also women of God that are in the house and people of God by the way help me celebrate the great apostle Joshua Selman I mean celebrate my friend celebrate my friend celebrate my brother celebrate him celebrate him that was some good word that was some great word I mean I literally sat back and I just said I think we just need to close the service at that time but then again, I still believe that just maybe there is one more person tonight that God is about to shift things for. And I believe the person with the loudest amen, you are the one that God is talking about. And I, I, I need you to know that um, the truth of the matter is that I, I, I believe the problem of the church basically is not a problem of power, so to speak, uh, because uh, by um, being made who we are with Christ and by um, the pronouncement of the Lord at the tail end of the ministry and by who he wants us to be, uh, people of God, I guess our biggest problem is uh, authority. I mean, uh, I mean, Apostle took his time to be telling us about power, about authority, and allow me to put it this way, um, the power of God um, is already uh, made available to every and each and every one of us who has accepted Jesus in their lives. As many as received him, uh, to them gave he power. Touch your neighbor and say power. Uh, but half of the time, I guess our biggest problem is the protocol of manifestation, uh, which is authority. Uh, because while power is inherent, the ability is already living with us. But the protocol of manifestation is actually where the issue is. And people of God, the devil will have you believe you've got no power. Uh, the devil will do everything possible. And people of God, uh, without a realization of the power that you're carrying your inner man people of God I want to bet my life on this that there won't even be a manifestation you won't even know what it is that you're doing I, I can go on and on to tell you stories about my about my life about how I I thought I became anointed at a point uh, not realizing that I've always been anointed but then again uh, my authority was under attack let me say it again the devil will have you believe anything but will never believe make you believe that you have as much as needed to change a situation did you hear what i just said right now the devil will make you believe it. you know what you're, 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 you're good enough for this area you're good enough here you're good enough here but sir i want you to know that keep bandos okay 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 let me let you into this in, you know still on the issue of our power and authority god speaks to um elijah and said I, I i want you i want you to go and meet the widow of zarephath i have i've commanded the widow to feed you there and elijah goes uh, because i'm uh, don't forget that this man is a, a powerful man of God. A powerful man of God. And then he goes to the widow and then and makes um, a plea and say, make something for me to eat. And the widow replies and says, I don't have enough. This thing I'm giving you is just what I have. And if I dare anything more than this, I will not have anything for I and my child. And besides, this is the last of it all. Then by authority, he says to the widow, the barrel of meal will not waste and the cruise of oil will not fail. And people of God, he had to use authority to release the power that was in the inner man to speak to the system that was sustaining him. Let me say it again. He had to speak. Now, he, God had already given a command. This system will sustain you. I've given a widow command to feed you there. However, there had to be a release, people of God. Authority for me is a protocol of manifestation of the power you have people of God there are too many powerful believers are too many powerful believers I, 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 I want you to know you you, you oh my goodness I, I, too many powerful believers but then again that are a little unsure about their authority 
And so people of God, every day the devil presents issues to you, all he's attacking is your authority. Listen, the devil is not very strong to take power from you. Any power you lose in fellowship with God, you allow the power to leak. Did you hear what I just said? But the devil can make you believe you don't have as much power as you, 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 you actually need in order to make situations change. But please, before we go on, help me look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, I am very powerful. Uh, some neighbors may not like what you said, but please, uh, it doesn't really matter. Please help me look at that neighbor again and tell your neighbor, say, I am powerful. And it is important that we read the scripture very quickly. I do not intend to take a lot of our time um, this night because I need us to pray in the next few minutes. And people of God, I, I, I need to read the scripture for us very quickly. And when we read um, the scripture, we will continue. Um, please help me open the book of Revelation chapter 5. Open the a book of Revelation uh, chapter 5. Um, Revelation chapter 5 Help me look at your neighbor again And tell your neighbor say you are powerful yeah. Now tell your neighbor walk in authority yeah. And say it again Say you are powerful yeah. Tell your neighbor again walk in authority yeah. uh, it, It's important that I remind every believer here uh, That um, it takes a whole lot From your faith base Right To build your power base However it takes a whole lot of confidence to walk in authority. People of God, when it has to do with the demonstration of the power of God, oh my goodness, faith is it. Faith is it. But however, when you look at the word confidence from the original Greek, it means to be outspoken. It means to be exuberant, especially about what you believe in. And so people of God, while faith works on your power base, confidence says express the power you have. Remember, confidence, that's why the Bible says, cast not away thy confidence which has great recompense of reward. People of God, I do know that you can be confident without being powerful. But let me shock you. You know the devil does not read your mind. So even when you are not as powerful but very confident, the devil will think that there's something that you have. Oh yes, oh yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, he's, that, he's, he's that so much of a coward. He's that so much, like, like, like you're very confident. You, you don't have power, you don't have power, but you're very confident and then you're just speaking the word. You're just declaring the word. Even if you know fear you, you go fear the word you did talk. Am I communicating? Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, be confident. And, and, and I, I don't want to, I, I would have stayed on this, but, but it just looked like Prof, um, uh, Apostle just took the first part of my, my word and was saying, and I just said, okay, no problem. But I need you to understand that, the, the, that whether you're talking about, do I mean, several in the scripture. So the scripture began to exchange this word, whether it is power right which is dunamis whether it's authority which is exousia whether it is strength which is krato what 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 what's that yesterday oh are you kidding me The spirit is one. The spirit is one. And so people of God, you need to understand it. So the expression, right, of the dunamis that you carry, people of God, is in the place of exousia. I'm, 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 am I communicating? And so people of God, uh, there are too many people who can. Do you know that you are so far? The word power from the original Greek comes from the word dunamis. This is the root word in English that you find words like dynamo, dynamite, dynamic, all of them coming. People of God, those who mind will tell you what a dynamite looks like. People of God, seated here looking at me, when God say I have given you power, it means that you are a walking dynamite. That wherever you come into, you have capacity to explode the place. Now, see the tragedy of it. How can I be a dynamite? And then, 
I enter a place, I got no dire. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. They will hear the sound. People of God, that is our power. And all of these things comes with the authority that you command the Kodosa. Listen, men who have changed the world did not have as much faith as you imagine they had. They were only people who put up bold faces even in the face of negativity. You look at some people and say, I wish I was that anointed. Some of them don't even believe they are even that anointed. But they are confident in this very one thing. That he who began a good work in their life. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I am confident of what the blood of the power the Lord has deposited in my inner man if you believe it thunder it louder amen and I want to say to you tonight it's important that I remind you you know one of the things I think about you know I, I, I said to myself you know in recent times I, 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 I encountered a scripture very beating well now people of God on that same way priest walk past that way again Thieves did not beat him. They did not catch him. They did not do anything. Then one influential man that was on his beast and was passing there, people of God, thieves did not meet him. Thieves in the kingdom is showing forth power even when you have said nothing, then it is magical. Let me say it again. The principle of power in the kingdom, if it is only about when I'm so powerful, I'm so powerful, and everywhere I go, I say nothing, and yet things begin to happen. It's a possibility, but if it is consistent like that, then I bet you it is magic. But in this kingdom, the way we express power is by what we say. Let me say this to you. You are not just powerful when you are saying the right thing. You are also powerful when you are saying the wrong thing. Did you hear what I just said right now? So you feel like, like if I say something stupid, it's not powerful. No, it's still powerful. It's still very powerful. Because the power did not leave because you were saying something stupid. So we find people, kingdom people, who say very stupid things and make them a reality. Sir, Kebalosha, minute. Sir, just like every seed is six months. And then when it comes, say, God, where did this come from? The devil is after my life. The devil says, See where I did. See where I did. I don't do anything. But you forgot that six months ago, you saw this. Two years ago, you saw. And ever since you released that word, you haven't even spoken anything against what you said. Am I talking to someone? Help me look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you are powerful. Why do I believe you have the wrong neighbor tonight? Help me leave that neighbor, get in the face of another and tell them you are powerful. Please help me say it again to them, say you are powerful. And before we read the book of Revelation chapter, because I don't, I don't, I don't intend to inundate us with the Lord because there's so much we have to do tonight. There's so much we have to do tonight. People of God, listen, whether you have faith or you do not have faith, hear me before the 31st of December because you walked into this place at the sound of your amen your destiny will experience a quantum leap I wish your amen will thunder louder than that I say there shall be a quantum leap there shall be a major shift. There shall be a great turnaround. Let your amen resound louder. Remember one of the ways we release power in this kingdom is by what we say. People of God, you can be so powerful, but if the devil succeeds in making you speechless, I'm afraid to say that there are grounds you are going to lose in destiny. Take your seat for one second. Look at your neighbor again and tell your neighbor, I am powerful. 
in what will look like a template to show forth and showcase authority in the scripture um, something struck me really hard and that, that was a vision that Ezekiel had I, I, I can't remember whether it was Ezekiel chapter 10 uh, where Ezekiel was was uh, recounting a vision of what he saw about cherubims right uh, cherubims that had four faces and Ezekiel was talking about and this ministering spirits remember the Bible called them ministering spirits I'm going somewhere that in executing divine will in executing divine agenda I was going to run to the part where there is no authority exhibition or execution or manifestation and people of God without it being in tandem with the will of God and then we find these executors of the will of God according to the way Ezekiel saw it and he said that these beings had these cherubims had four faces and uh, Ezekiel said uh, one, one of their faces was the face of a lion and Ezekiel said one of their faces was the face of an ox and Ezekiel said one of the faces was the face of a man and Ezekiel said the last face was the face of an eagle it wouldn't have bothered me until John the Revelator in the book of Revelation John said I've seen something similar however I've seen some beings and people of God in John's revelation he said one also had the face of an ox the face of a lion the face of an eagle and the face of a man and people of God while I prayed for tonight the spirit of God said to me do you realize that these are the faces of the manifestation of authority people of God in the realm that we are in as those who are going to execute the will of God on earth these are the four faces that you need to carry in order to make sure that people of God the face of an ox is not enough unfortunately people of God the face of an eagle is not enough and people of God so many to all together these four faces were faces that executed the will of God people of God the first face that the Bible talked about about was the face of a lion let me tell you believers there can never be a believer who will walk in a high level authority until he begins to carry the face of a lion until he begins to roar become aggressive like a lion uh, people of God man, no sick in the shire. record our seed I, uh, do you know that lions can get sick can fall sick but people of God, lions never lose their roar. Let me say it again. A lion can be weak. A lion can be infirmed. A lion can be afflicted. But a lion never loses his roar. I came to let you know, no matter what happens to you, don't let the devil steal your roar. Am I talking to someone? This is the way. This is the kibanda koshadia. Oh my goodness. You see, in the place where we're going to read, the Bible says that um, one of the elders told John the Revelator and said to John the Revelator, weep not. Um, uh, uh, for, for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. And you are looking at me. Uh, and you are from the tribe of the lion of the tribe of Judah. In other words, we are lions and people of God. Do not forget your advice the devil uh, go it about uh, like a, a roaring lion uh, seeking whom to devour people of God my greatest my greatest my oh my goodness you see he understands the Bible did not say he goes about he is a lion the Bible say he go it about like people of God he knows how powerful you are and our DNA is as those who come from the lion of the tribe of Judah so he me mix who you should be and use who you should be against you and so Nasada, the seasons you are supposed to roar he's the one roar excuse me devil that is not part of your job description I am the roar I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying I am the roar you are the afraid Oh, you gotta get that. Let me tell you, people of God, 
We cannot keep explaining power and authority. Explain power and authority. Power and authority is not explained. It is manifested. Every day as a believer, they keep explaining power to you. Explaining power to you. Yet what stopped your father is still stopping you. What stopped your mother is still stopping you. Who them be? Who be their papa? Are they not aware? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Can you raise your right hand? You better get ready. Whether you are ready for this or not, raise your voice and turn the fire. I am the true lion. He's mimicking who I should be. And he's using who I should be against me. And then he roars I hide. He roars I hide. He roars I hide. He takes your mistake. He roars at you. He takes what is not working at you. He roars at you. You live your life perpetually afraid. He roars and tells you this is how you will end. He roars and tells you nothing will work out. He roars and tells you this is the way it's going to happen. By December, everything is going to... He roars and tells you... Your expectations will never be your reality. I commend Sulaya and the Korashaya. I Kodia. Today we tell the devil, enough is enough. You cannot take my personality. I am the one who shall be roaring back at every defeat, back at every failure, back at every liar. Can somebody help me turn the fire? Take yourself for one second. I didn't mean to be like this. But people of God, it's important that I inform you that another face, he said, is that I saw this guy away from the face of the lion. He carried the face of an ox. People of God, an ox is a beast of burden. People of God, is a beast of what he carries so much burden. Send the Let's Lesebiad. Anybody who tells you you're going to walk in authority without knowing what it means to carry a burden, they didn't tell you the right thing. Second answer. The Bible says, can a nation be born in one day? Can the earth be made to bring forth at once? But the Bible says, as soon as Zion travail, sir, no matter what happens, there's got to be a travail, even if it is short. Did you hear what I just said right now? So, stop misinterpreting what is happening to you. It is only a labor pang. It is not a trouble. Did you hear what I just said right now? I don't know the drug they usually give women when they have debil delayed labor. You know, when labor is not progressing, women here, you understand that labor. And I hear that that injection is very painful. Uh, when they give it to you, it's, like, ah! it's very painful all of a sudden. But the idea behind it when the midwife is giving you that injection is that there's something that you carry. There's something inside of you. We can't let it die in the inside of you. You know the reason why you came to activate because there are things that you have been carrying in the womb of your spirit. And the Lord said to you, I didn't put them in to shut you down. I put them in there in order to cause you to bring forth so that you can bring forth every single thing I have put in the inside of you. If you understand what I said, can you turn that in louder? Amen. And people of God, I need you to understand that away from an ox used and to, to make sacrifices during the Bible time. Whether it is power, whether it's authority. I was going to say that interchangeably, both dunamis, both exousia, both kratos, at some point in the scripture, they were interchangeably used. So people of God, some places where you could have ordinarily said they were referring to exousia, people of God, it now seemed like they were actually talking about dunamis. Some places where you think they are talking, and they are talking about kratos. But the most important thing I want you to have at the back of your mind, whichever one you are talking about, it must come with a deal 
deal of sacrifice. Some people it must be prayer sacrifice. Some people it might be consecration sacrifice. Some people nothing limits God than perpetually living in sin. And people of God, it cuts off every link that you should have. People of God, the eyes of your understanding will not be enlightened. People of God, you find out, oh my, the Bible says the God of this world has darkened. People of God, there's a darkening of the mind. People of God, because until you understand that I am born for some high level power. Let me even tell you this thing. Let me tell you something. I, 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 I want you to understand that if I have been making a particular prayer and I have not gotten an answer, it's higher than my power capacity. Am I communicating? And so people of God, one of the things that depreciates, deflate, people of God, your power potential are the things happening around. And so I need you to know that the face of an ox, people of God, is the face of sacrifice. And away from that, let me quickly run, away from the place of sacrifice, the face that he saw of man. And the Lord said, you can walk in absolute authority thinking of the present realm that you are in. Sir, that is no, let me tell you, the, the, the only Kabosha. So, I, I don't know where to begin from, but let me say this. So, when God spoke about dominion mandate, he says, I've given you dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over everything that creepeth upon the earth. And I would always say to my people, man is a terrestrial being. Man walks on the earth. And God decides to give man dominion and begins to tell man, you know what? I am pointing to the fish of the, uh, to the beds of the air. Things that are higher than you. Realms that are not your own. Places where you say, it is not my natural way of doing things. This is not what comes to me naturally. This is not where I find expression naturally. And God says, that is where I am sending you to. Sir, authority that is what manifesting is authority that you exercise in realms that you are not familiar in. You know, the highest restriction some of us have put on our destinies is that you've already told yourself, no matter what happens, I will never be good in this area. But every day God is pointing you to that area because he wants to take off the old gap of what you feel about yourself, how you feel. Uh, this is the next season I'm taking you to. Most of your answers, most of what you desire from God is stored up in a new man you have refused to do, have not yet become. People of God, these are the four faces. The faces people of God of an eagle the face of a man people of God the face of an ox and the face of a lion am I communicating and I'm going to tidy up on this scripture and when I, I read the scripture right now we'll be praying together look at your neighbor for me and tell your neighbor walk in authority say throne a book written within and on the back side a sealed with seven seals and I saw a strong angel read the book, neither to look thereon, of Judah. The root of David had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the beast, and in the midst of the elders, stood the lamb as it had been slain. There was pandemonium in heaven, because there was even an angel, not an ordinary angel. The Bible calls that angel a strong angel. And people of God, I remember I said a person there, and that was the elder. One of the elders were there, the one that touched John, the revelator, and said to John, John, don't please, don't cry. For the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. People of God, that guy has seemed to have authority, but the Bible did not describe him as powerful. But that is not where I am going to. But people of God, but the one that was powerful, that couldn't stay in the place of authority, seemed like, what do we do next? An elder had an answer. Help me look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, elder. I need you to look at your neighbor again, say elder. I say it again to your neighbor, say elder. Say it again to your neighbor, say elder. I do know that you would have thought that you would have been an angel. The word elder in its own, it is not just about longevity of years. People of God, it had a lot more to do with, I've been here too long enough. I've stayed here too long enough. I've been enough. I know the mechanics that generate results around here. He says, there is a fellowship I am familiar with here. There is a way things work here that I will not join the other one to utter some things here. In other words, the summation of my manifestation. And so the elder said, and then he was the one 
that touched John, the revelator, and said to John, no, we don't cry here. People of God, no matter what happens, we don't cry. He said, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. It is important that I remind every sound of my voice that the Bible said that this book was sealed how many times? Was sealed how many times? When John said, he turned and looked, he discovered that there was a lamb that was standing looking as if it had been slain and John said I looked at the lamb and I discovered it had seven horns and it had seven eyes how many times were this book sealed and the lamb had what seven horns symbol of strength and so even if you like seal it Seal it seven times. There was commensurate power. There was commensurate power. Sir, let me tell you. The reason why some people are crying is because some things are sealed. When they become unsealed, a generation will laugh. The reason why there are some tears going on around you. Please, can I make it a prayer tonight? If your amen will thunder louder, whatever that is sealed around you, I sealed around your family, sealed around your work with God, I sealed around your expectation, I sealed around your heart desire. At the sound of your amen, I decree, let them be unsealed right now. I said, let them be unsealed right now. 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 Let your amen rise higher. And John the Revelator said it was sealed seven times, but there was a requisite strength for it. It was sealed seven times, but there was a requisite power for it. It was sealed seven times, but there was something that was there. For every seal, there was a horn. For every seal, there was something to scatter it. For every seal, there was something to demolish it. For every seal, people of God, the authority we carry is not the absence of challenges. Did you hear what I just said right now? So, sir, how do we know that there is power in your inner man? It's when they tell you, show all walking. Did you hear what I just said right now? When they say to you, this is what it is. I know the book. I know the book. I've read it. I've read the book. I've read the book. I've read the book. I know. And then the only way heaven will know whether you've read the book is by the assignment they will set for you. And people of God, I short note. If you don't know it, you don't know it. When they tell you, write short note on this one. And, all that, and that was the one you were planning to read before the exam started. And they're saying, write short note on it. You're looking at the note and the note is looking at you. But I want you to understand that that was not the case with the lamb. He said, for it already had his hands even before the seal. Am I communicating? So what was sealed became an opportunity for God to demonstrate the hands it had already given. The people of God, there's already something inside. I tell you, the, the time you gave your life to Christ, he put something on the inside of you. Every time you came to church, every time you worship, every time you fellowship, the moment you woke up in the morning and you were reading a scripture, I know you said, Pastor, I was tired. And then I opened, I managed to read one verse, something entered. Something entered inside of you. You are not as ordinary as you imagine that you are. And so what God, why God brought what happened to you was not to ridicule your work with him. It's because there's a horn that has developed. People of God, let us know whether this horn is a read and lift up your right hand and declare with a loud voice. Say today, say whatsoever that is sealed around my life, whatsoever that is real sealed around my family, say right now, break, 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 break. Let your amen rise higher. And as your two hands are lifted, I decree whatever that is sealed around your children, around your heart desire, likabada subada, ekon diabasa, akalibasa, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I announce, let it be broken right now. 
Let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. Whatever is sealed around your finances, whatever is sealed around your health, whatever is sealed around your children, whatever is sealed around your expectation, at the sound of your amen, let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. I don't know why God is asking me to declare this, but at the sound of your amen, anything around any of your children, anything around any of your children, God has brought you tears, that brought you pain. At the sound of your amen, I announce that they are broken right now. 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 Let your amen turn the louder. Let your amen turn that out. Uh, unexplainable patterns and cycles uh, around you. Uh, I announce, let them be broken. Uh, let them be broken. Uh, let them be broken. Uh, whatever is the reason why you swallow tablets every day, uh, I announce, uh, let them be broken. Uh, let them be broken. Uh, let them be broken. Uh, let cancers be broken. Uh, let autism be broken. Uh, let lies of the enemy be broken. Uh, I say, let them break. Uh, let them break her, let them break her, let them break her, let them break her. Take your seat for one second. Shekon de Balasadia, Kendeborosubalaya, Endebosutaya. I, I want you to remember again we're talking about power and we're talking about authority. And John the Revelator said, I, I heard a voice. And he said to me, the, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. That was the voice I heard. He said to me, I had no reason to worry. But John the Revelator said in one second, I turned. And then I looked. And I saw that someone who was on the throne was a lamb that was slain looking like it was dead how do you tell me a lion has prevailed tell me that is a lion but what I am seeing does not look like what you, are, what you just said right now man who works in power what you see is a presentation your power has been wired to solve Let me say it again. What you see is not an estimation of your power. I know that you've heard it many times. The reason why this is happening to you is to show you your power level. Most of the time, it's not an estimation of your power. It's what your power has been wired to solve. Somebody say, I got this. I'm not sure that you... You're, somebody thunder it again. Say, I got this. If you're next three days, it will not pass the next three days. 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 Let there be a turn around. 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 Let your aim and turn the louder. John the Revelator said, listen, there's something I saw, there's something I saw. And John the Revelator said, he didn't just have horns. He didn't just have horns. He didn't just have seven horns. Uh, but he had seven eyes. And so it was not just a, a presentation of strength and power. But there was also a presentation of revelation. So what you had was a fusion of power and revelation. And so sir, so I did not release power and walk in authority in blindness. Because I'm going to see that. There's the strength of... I, 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 let me say this. Let me say this to you. You see, a power is like paracetamol. If you swallow paracetamol, it can work anything. Like, if you decide, right? If you decide, if, you, if, you, if your desire is headache, and then you have eye pain, and you took paracetamol, there are chances that it will affect both the eye pain and the headache. 
But if it is a, a severe one, sometimes your eye pain can go and the headache will remain. But lack of revelation will tell you that since the eye pain has gone, the headache does not matter. Was that the reason why I took the paracetamol the first time? And so, sir, there are a lot of believers who carry power, but they don't have the revelation of what to do with their power. That takes you to the place called ordinary. It takes you to, oh, my dear, you are as ordinary as every other believer. You are just as ordinary as a, but sir, beto, sir, the power I carry in my inner man provokes revelations of what let me I was like fire in my book it was shut up like it wouldn't let me rest it wouldn't let me rest so people of God show me a believer who works in power I will show you a believer who works in revelation because there's always a rev oh my god do you know that revelations are powered by power sir let me say this you cannot carry power and power. Listen, it is only in the exercise of your power in the place of authority that your power can be defined. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. In the place of authority that your power can be. The, the Bible says, behold, I give you power to do this and do this and do this and do this. Sir, I am not powerless when I get into the marketplace. The power you have is not just the power that heals cancer. The power you have is the power that you can get in. And when you sit down and look at your business, seven ideas will come. Twenty of them will come. When you look at your children, the Lord will begin to give you ideas about what to do. People of God, that is the expression of the, the Bible calls it the exceeding. The greatness of his power. People of God, that means this is the power that runs above limits. The word exceeding already says it runs above limits. Remember, you could have received, lifted up your hands and say, Lord, I just need power to be strong. I need power to love you more. I need power to be consistent in my dealings with you. People of God, when he releases the power, the power that you carry does not just now make you stronger. Remember the reason why you got the power was, Lord, I want to be strong in you. But when he gives you the power it is exceeding that you might know the exceeding greatness of his power is exceeding it's not just to make you strong it goes into your academics it moves from your academics and gets into your family and so people of God you find yourself operating in different and you, seasons you say I just see new things happening in my life I don't know how it happened me I know how it happened because the power you received was not a power domiciled uh, just to make you a believer that knows how to speak in tongues if all that the power is less power that we got the world will have no respect for our power but people of God the power that you have and you stand in front of your boss and and he asks you a question about business about office about your career without thinking about it he makes your tongue like the pen of a ready writer and you begin in the marketplace you're so strong in your office you're so anywhere you get to and you keep asking what is it about apostle Paul say I have become all things to all men you might think that that is one of the basest things anybody can say but I want to let you know it's one of the most powerful statements anybody can say I've become all things to all men. if you take me here I am something if you take me there I am something wherever you take me to I've got something that I've got to tell them but hey people of God before I get here because we're getting ready to pray Jesus speaks I say I come in the volumes of what has been written about me Notice, people of God, every time a seal is opened up in the book of Revelation and it is thrown on the earth, some things begin to happen upon the earth. So, people of God, Jesus said, the reason for my manifestation is that the volumes of what has been written about me has already arrived. And you know it like you know your name. This does not look like my true level. This does not look like what God has assigned for me. This does not look like what God has ordained for me. People of God, can you lift up your right hand wherever you are and decree after me, say today. Uh, I say, say it again like you mean it, say today. Uh, say whatsoever has been written about my life. Uh, say right now. Uh, let it be a lot. 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 Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Open your 
Somebody making a prayer. Let it be unlocked. Check out your mother. Rock a beer, the sun. I check out the mother. Rock a beer, the sun. I can't be there. Check out the mother. It's shun the beer. Rock a beer, the sun. I shall be there. Let go of the beer. Rock a beer, the sun. Shall be there. Let go of the beer. I shall be there. Rock a beer, the sun. I can't be there. I shall be there. Let go of the sun. Rock a beer, the sun. I want you to know, Jesus said there are volumes. It's not just one thing that's been written about me. There are too many things written. And all he said is that I'm manifesting according to the volumes that have been written. And so, Sakiba on the shoulder, lift up your two hands before God. There are volumes written about you for 2024. There are volumes written about you for 2023. People of God, and you have not yet manifested them. You've not yet manifested them. There were things God told you at the beginning of the year. These are the things I'm going to do through you. There were things that God said to you. These are the things that will happen in your life. I came with a word from God. And with a mandate from on high. At the sound of your amen. I announce. Let there be a manifestation. 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 Let your amen rise higher. Let your amen rise higher. Let your amen rise higher. Let your amen thunder. As your two hands are lifted, whatever that is locked in your health. Locked in your finances. People of God, cancers are disappearing tonight. That's what the Lord is saying to me. Cancers are disappearing tonight. I, 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 see, I see you in the spirit. I don't know where you are. While all these prayers were going on, you kept lifting up your cancer report. You kept lifting up your cancer report. You kept lifting up your cancer report. By the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I announce, let it be reversed right now. 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 Shakuba Leyadaba. Any surgery they said was supposed to take place in your spine. By the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed right now. Any tumor in any part of your body by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Let it be reversed. 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 Let your amen turn the louder. Let your amen turn the louder. Limitation, any embargo, a corporation, at the sound of your amen, let it be broken right now. Our adventure you came in here sick in any part of your body. I want you to lay your hand in that particular place. For Jesus was made manifest that he might destroy all the works of the enemy. Whether it is blindness, whether it is deafness, whether it is dumbness, whether it is a genotype. If you don't like what is arthritis, a collabasadia, whether it is a prostrate issue, incapadasadia, whether it's an intestinal obstruction, licatabalasaria, heart enlargement, diabetes, lekebenesia, hypertension, rakadabasia, according by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I announce, let it be reversed right now. Let it be broken right now. Let it be broken right now. Let it be broken. 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 Let your amen turn the louder. Let your amen turn the 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 Shakoba the other side. 
for the scripture says as soon as the lamb I took the book and the Bible said the angels bowed and the Bible says the beast bowed and the Bible says the Kura and the beast all of them bowed I, as soon as he took back what was written at the sound of your amen I announce take back your life this may not make sense to some people but there are people right now you don't know what came into your family he called us scattered your joy scattered your peace scattered the love but at the sound of your amen I announce take back your life take back your joy take back your peace take it back 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 let your name and turn the louder see Kobani and Abashai the Lord is taking me back to this issue lift up your two hands wherever you are whatever that is due to happen in your life whatever that is due to happen in your life that has not yet been days whatever that is due to happen in your family whatever that needs to happen in the life of a loved one is it your marriage is it your healing at the sound of your amen I am now let it appear right 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 now let the door open let the healing come right now right now let your amen turn the louder let your amen rise higher. Let your amen turn the louder. Let your amen turn the louder. Let your amen rise. With your two hands left, come and rebo Roshida and the Korasi Banada, the Korosu Banada. Tonight we pray, Lekina Asaba and the Kosha. Anyone under the sound of my voice, only under any form of oppression affecting your life, I call Abarabasha, obstructing your journey, Leki Katusia and the Bikatolasha, Rakoti Anasa and Kabedo Subalana and Shabiana and your clean spirit under the sound of my voice, Lekabedo. Foundations you don't know about. Like a beto casa. Isakato. Rakabina. Asakatia. Lakoshebe. Apalaya. Patterns that stopped others that want to arise to stop you. Kipato lasha. Ordinances from the pit of hell. Rakabede asha. Accordia. Stronghold in business. Stronghold in career. Akadebesha. Alabianaka. I come on the sea at the sound of your amen. I announce, let them be broken. 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 I announce, let them go. 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 Every unequal legs, unequal hands, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I announce, let them be made equal right now. Whether you are blind in one eye or blind in your two eyes, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I announce, let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed right now. 
Let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed right now. Let it be reversed right now. Let your amen turn the louder. Let your amen turn the Let your amen turn the What did not work all this while? In another seven days, they will become your major evidence. You will not pray that prayer again. You will not pray that prayer again. You will not pray that prayer again. Let there be a turn around. Let there be a turn around. Any year that be subtracted from your life uh, as a result of patterns of negativity, the Lord is restoring right now. Restoring the years you lost. Uh, restoring the years your children lost. Uh, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Let your amen turn the louder. Anyone who is asking God, is this how the year will end? Is this how I'm going to end this year? If your amen will turn, I announce in another five days, receive an evidence that this is not how your year will end. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Let your amen turn the louder. Today I announce is a new season over your life. The Bible say, and they sang a new song. And they sung a new song. Before the Lamb on the throne. And the sound of your amen. May the Lord give you a new song tonight. You will sing a new song over your health. Over your family. I say a new song. 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 Let your amen turn the louder. We have two hands lifted before the Lord. Kabarande koso bolonde yadabasha. Zika nabalia no kosubara. I don't know why I'm led to make the prayer the way I'm making it. But at the sound of your amen, whatever you thought was going to take time. Whatever you thought was going to take time. Whatever you thought was going to take time. At the sound of your amen, may the Lord bring you closer than you thought about. I join my faith with the faith of the man of God here and I decree over your life the next 14 days will be 14 days of speed like never before. Will be 14 days of recovery, 14 days of restoration, 14 days of laughter, 14 days of good news, 14 days of family turnaround. I say receive it right now. Receive it from the Lord. Receive it from the Lord. Receive it from the Lord. Let your amen rise higher. Shaki Badaya. I want everyone under the sound of my voice to realize there are four faces of authority. Like I said, the face of a lion, the face of an ox, the face of an eagle, and the face of a man. So Kobali Adabasha. There are seasons where you need all the four faces. There are seasons where you need one face. So people of God, whether it is four faces for a face or one face for a face, whichever one it is, Kebala Nosia. This is where you require revelation. No matter the sphere of influence that God has brought you to, whichever face you are supposed to adorn uh, so that it will become the vehicle uh, to transport the power already in your inner man at the sound of your amen, receive discernment to know what to do. I wish your amen were thunder louder than that. There's someone under the sound of my voice. Your loved one is in coma. At the sound of your amen. Before the service is over, your loved one is coming out of coma. Any mother here with an autistic child, at the sound of your amen, let autism be reversed right now. Anybody waiting on God for the fruit of the womb? Shabbat by activate. By activate 2024. You will be coming here with your babies. I announce it is done. I announce it is done. 
I hear the Lord say, I am reversing every hormonal imbalance. Every hormonal imbalance is being reversed. Every hormonal imbalance is being reversed. Receive it of the Lord. 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 I announce it's a new season. It's a greater day. It's a greater impact. Your life will never remain the same again. Your life will never remain the same again. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Let your amen chant the louder. I'm going to say this before I step out of your face. The lamb that was on the throne was bleeding. Looked like it was dead but he didn't lose his horns. There are seasons when you will bleed. But I beg of you, don't lose your horn. Did you hear what I just said? I didn't lose my authority because I'm bleeding. I am not powerless because I am bleeding. But I begin to lose power when I lose my horns. So, I came to let you know, even if the blood drips to your eyes, wipe it and touch your horn. Did you hear what I just said? I still got my horn in place. To some, your horn might be your prayer altar. To some, your horn might be your worship altar. To some, your horn might be your consecration to some whatever it is I might bleed I might see drip I might even question the things I believe in but no matter what happens kepando sokopana kendo sokodoshia elindia sakopadosi lekorasaya for some people under the sound of my voice, if you lose your heart, you've lost everything. Sir, let me say this. If you don't tell them you're bleeding, they will never know. You are the one who sees a bleeding lamb. But what they see is a lion. The elder said, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Listen. Bleed as a lamb, but show up as a lion. Did you hear what I just said right now? I want to say it again. Bleed as a lamb, but show up as a lion. Not in the apple. Did you hear what I just said? No matter what happens, if you don't tell them you bled, they will never find out. Can I tell you something? The elder didn't say the bleeding lamb has prevailed. He says the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. What happened to the lamb did not prevail. But who the lamb chose to show up as was what prevailed. Don't show up with what happened to you. Show up with how you decide. It did happen but the authority I have in Christ says what happened to me is not who I am. God bless you house of the world. I know we can give God a bigger praise than that. Whoa! If you were blessed, like I suspect that you are, please put your hands together one more time. Celebrate the Lord.
by this announcement you are in Activate 2024. By this announcement you are in Activate 2024. Where is George? By this announcement you are in Activate 2024. Is he in Activate 2024? It is always the middle of November. Always. Always. Always the middle of November. It's not about to change. One more time, please put your hand together for this incredible gift to the body of Christ. Quick announcement. There's no morning session tomorrow. We gather again in the evening um, for prophetic worship. Minister Sumisola Agbebi is going to be in the house. Priya Odide is going to be in the house. And then I have another surprise. You know, see, I'm full of surprise. I, I, full, I so, so. So you don't want to miss it tomorrow. It's going to be an incredible time in the presence of God. And then on Sunday, it all culminates in two incredible services in the morning. Wow. Lift your hands in thanksgiving. If you have testimonies, don't forget, send it to goddidit at hotlphc.com or something. They should put it on, on the screen. Glory to God. Lift your hands in thanksgiving inside and outside. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the signs. Thank you for the wonders. Thank you for clarity. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for direction. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for power. Thank you for activation. Thank you for bringing us to the consciousness of who we are in Christ. We give you praise and we give you glory, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May God send you help out of his sanctuary. Fulfill all your petitions and grant you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Point to somebody and say, surely, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life because you are the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow at 5 p.m.